today on how it's made riding mowers popcorn adjustable beds and cultured diamonds When it comes to sitting down on the job, the riding mower is just the vehicle. Animals powered the first ones in England in the 19th century. When motorized mowers came along in the 20th century, they improved on the concept and we were on our way to greener pastures. Step behind the controls of a riding mower and you can tame that unruly lawn without even breaking a sweat. The job can be done speedily because a riding mower moves at quite a clip. To make one, a robot delivers a sheet of steel to a die. The die closes with a thousand tons of force to make a big impression. It shapes it into the part that holds the mowing blades, what's called the mower deck. They transfer the mower decks to a series of presses. They punch holes for the blade attachments and trim the edges. Workers stack the decks for washing. After a treatment with a chemical rust inhibitor, it's time to plunge them into a primer solution. The overhead rack delivers a negative charge to the decks, while the primer has a positive charge, which draws it onto the decks in an even coat. This is called electrostatic painting. They assemble three spindles to mowing blades and hoist a mower deck over the blade assemblies. They bolt the head of each blade subassembly to the mower deck. Then they thread rubber belts around pulleys to drive the blades. Assembly continues with gauge wheels, a protective belt casing, and a chute for the cut grass. Next, they clamp a set of steel rails along with some attachments to a welding table. The welding table swings around to an awaiting crew of robots. The robots move in and weld the attachments to the rails. These rails will serve as the framework for the riding mower. The attachments are for the front wheels. Once the rails have been primed, an overhead conveyor takes them into a paint booth. Nozzles spray a powder paint onto the parts for an enamel-like finish. The powder that doesn't stick is recycled. They lower the engine subassembly into position to build the vehicle framework around it. Then bolt the welded and freshly glossed side rails to tubing at the front and back. They attach the footrest to the frame, then install the platform for the seat. They assemble those nifty steering levers which can be moved into 15 positions. Then they install metal yokes on the front wheels. They slot the yoke's shaft into the frame rail, securing it with a metal snap ring. Now comes the front grille that's vented to protect the engine from overheating. The rear wheels go on next. They're more substantial than the front ones because this is a rear wheel drive machine. It's time to mount the mower deck and blades onto the vehicle. They position it in front and roll the vehicle over it. The workers activate a lift that elevates the work table to a height that makes it easier for them to secure the mower deck to the framework. They attach the belts on the mower deck to the engine. Monitoring equipment will help them see if this mower's got what it takes to mow down the competition. They put it in gear and check the wheels to confirm that they turn at the correct speed. They adjust the transmission if they're not. They also check the electrical components and if all systems are go, they complete the assembly.
they bolt a side panel in place, followed by the instrument panel. And last comes the seat, complete with armrests. It takes 72 minutes to assemble one of these riding mowers, and it should be good for at least a decade of mowing. Good thing, because its workload is constantly growing. We don't know exactly when popcorn first exploded onto the snack scene, but it was likely thousands of years ago. Popcorn grains dating back nearly 5,600 years have been discovered in caves in New Mexico. And down through the ages, this unique grain just keeps popping up. Nothing says it's showtime like a big bowl of popcorn. This grain has certainly made it big in the entertainment biz. This success story has its roots on the farm, of course. Popcorn is one of six types of corn, and it's the only kind that pops. They even breed the popcorn plant to enhance traits like color, taste, and popability. By fall, the crop is ready to harvest. Peeling back the husks reveals kernels that are smaller and harder than those of other corn. At harvesting, popcorn has a moisture content of 16 to 20 percent. That's a bit too high, so to bring it down to 14 percent, they condition the crop in these giant bins.